I did not expect such heavy hitting themes to be introduced in this show, or I expected just the trash isekai, right? But then suddenly we're talking about the wealth gap and the disparity between the poor people and the rich people, as this is the inevitable circumstance in any developed nation, as you know, people get richer, the poor get poorer. And the MILF is not a MILF, it's a child. Chill. She just kind of baited me in the opening because anyone who could have seen the opening and thought, ah, that must be the token MILF wizard. Nah. She's a kid, she kind of leads like leads the orphans here. And even though we can we didn't convince her yet. We told her, hey, ours was like come with us i'll feed you well and do that thing but what's like, she's like what about everyone else it's like it's your fucking fault it's kind of funny how this kid is telling a three-year-old kid ours is three right now she's ex basically complaining all her fucking problem into the three-year-old kid and i'm just realizing how ridiculous this is but ours is technically like a like an older person that used to do logistics stuff and here's another question does anybody actually remember what ours was before i read some comments before on the last episode about how the isekai element doesn't fucking matter. Because, like, how important is the logistics and all the important isekai stuff that happened in the past life, you know, being introduced into his new life? And I was thinking about that comment, and I'm like, hold the fuck up. I straight up kind of did forget what he was even doing back on Earth, right? He was some kind of, like, salary man. He was doing some kind of, like, logistics stuff, I think. Some kind of accounting or logistics. But, like, how does that really play into the thing? But then again... If you think about, like, Tensura, how often do you think about Rimuru, you know, being back in this old past life, right? So maybe that argument isn't as strong. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Let's begin today's reaction. Castle Town. We're back at that city where the kids are, right? No, more sad backstory! Look at those rich-ass kids in those, you know, fucking carriages! With their rich-ass mom and dad, with their rich-ass toys! Spawn point, man. The spawn point determines your life more important than other factors in life. That's fucked, huh? Oh, no, you're so mean! I hope she stole the bread. How old is she right now? Like, less than 10, right? Back to the present? Yes? Yes, back to the present. This is the gang members. She's not even, like, crying. When was the last time I cried, she said in the beginning of this. She's got a buyer. That's so creepy. Who's the buyer, though? Did they talk about that last episode? Bro, where is the justice? Surely ours, the three-year-old main character, will show up, right? My man's ready to kill. Yes. <laughs> and then the three-year-old. Operate <laughs> skill, easy. Why don't we just buy her from them? You know what? He's probably not even wrong. The slave trader, right? He's doing some fucked up shit, but the nobles do get involved. Obviously, we're not those kind of nobles, but like what he's saying, it is true. Yeah, I don't know you, but I see the potential in your magic. That's what we want you for. <laughs> Why does her eyes look so empty? Because she's been living in poverty as a kid? Mage, yeah. That's the quality we're looking for. No ambition because she has no hopes or dreams. <laughs> he has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Wait, this is getting so motivational? Damn. Are we reaching her heart, maybe? This slave trader? <laughs> Listen, there's some triumphant music going on in the background and ours is, you know, sounding like a hero. But this slave trader has come up with the funniest fucking little responses which has been all true this entire time. It's like... <laughs> ambition? Of course, he's a fucking slave. What did you fucking expect? <laughs> it's like, bro, what are you talking about? You know those fucking bicycles all the time. He's a, he's a piece of shit. But some of the things he's saying is kind of funny. <laughs> she got a future with us. Come on. Money just talks, I guess. It should be up to her, though. Crunchyroll, what are you fucking doing? Hello? Hello? Where is the... 
fucking... Uh, do we know this hurdle person, guys? Who is hurdle? She should be the one to decide. At a certain point, the spawn point does determine, but, but you decide what you can do with that afterwards. Yeah, that's right. Steal that bread. Damn. Tears are for the weak, and weakness means death. Do you think that she might cry at the end of this episode to ours? I think it would be a pretty cool way to, like, accept her if she finally cries after she said, like, I, I can't remember the last time I've cried. The moment she cries, maybe her ambition will grow. <laughs> there it is! There it is! Damn, I thought we didn't have to fucking wait! That was fucking immediate! Oh, you still want to fight? Uh-uh. Ritz, please go easy on them. <laughs> I feel bad for these people. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Let's go! Oh, he got the fucking weapons out this time! No more bare hands! Wow, they're actually supposed to fight too, not even like, no, off-screening it. His accuracy with the knife throws is so fucking good. What the fuck? So, I guess this is an introduction of like magic items in this world. So like, with these magical items, you can also cast magic. Together they do fire magic. <laughs> Means nothing to him. <laughs> Means nothing to Ritz. And I wonder why it's a small short dagger knife thing here. Is that his weapon of choice? Or is he going easy right now? Because, like, imagine what he could do with the fucking big-ass sword. But I guess, you know, for discreetness, you know, it's better to carry on this small weapon. Yeah, he is kind of cracked. I've just, just, he's just been wiping everybody. A formidable opponent, finally. <laughs> he's bald also. Okay, he's a captain. After you beat them, I'll give him more booze. Let's see. Appraise him. What's he good at? No? If ours appraised and there's nothing special, I think it's over. Wait, no! They should they could have done something hilarious by like appraising him, bro, right? They could it, ours could have appraised them and then it could have given, you know, stats of like C for strength and different in numbers and stats, but then there should be one stat called like bald. And bald could have been like one hundred out of one hundred or something. Could you fucking imagine the memes possible if only? <laughs> Oh, pig. Buta. Oh. Oh. Ho, ho. Hi, hi. Bro, come on. Put up a fight. They hyped you up. But Ritz is way too fucking strong. <laughs> that was the wonkiest uppercut I've ever seen. <laughs> a little lacking on the impact there. But hey. Ritz still strong as fuck. All right. Now she can be convinced to join us. But what about the other kids, right? Yes, we defeated a slave trader. Oh. Well, shit! Why didn't you tell me that from the beginning, bro? We could have had a simple fucking trade and nobody would have gotten hurt and I would have had my fucking door. But here we are. You had to come in here. <laughs> Nearly kill all my people, and now you're gonna buy her? All right, all right, whatever. Where are you going with this, Ritz? So it's actually in your best interest to take this payment. Ah, then it looks bad on them for a slave being stolen. No one wants to work with them. Therefore, it's better for them to buy it. Got it. We'll take her for free and your company looks bad. <laughs> Throwing a little extra for bonus? Okay. This is all his plan too? Holy shit. <laughs> we bought you. Maybe we'll buy all the other orphans too around her? That was so weird how the piano soundtrack just ended. I thought there was going to be some, something important. Oh, okay, where are we going? The other kids, the orphans? Because <laughs> he's so tiny. I mean, he's a three-year-old kid. He should have gotten rich to carry him, bro. That's funny for no reason. Beautiful view of our town. 
that's written with slave trade. Uh, what about it? See? The city ain't so bad. Look at the beautiful morning. Okay. Because you're my Aruji now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, she's taking our offer. He's a child, three-year-old kid right now. So this isn't so, that, that was just kind of all uh, that was kind of just random as fuck. Yep, I like children. I want to protect the children. Give them a better future. Okay, okay. Yeah, isekai life. Really? Maybe. I'm a piece of shit. So like when I'm in my public transit and when, I, when I'm taking the bus or I'm in the train and I'm not like having a bad day from work, when I see a kid, I get fucking mad. I'm like, what the fuck are you looking up, dumbass? These kids will fucking stare right at you. And sometimes I straight up make eye contact right back. I'm like, fuck you want? What are you looking at, bitch? And they just keep staring. And I'm like, motherfucker, what do you want? And I try to make faint faces. And then the mom I look at me, so I turn away. But anyways, the kids bring hope to him. Wow. A child smile. Oh. Another tangent. When I go to work, there's this bus I take. And for some fucking reason, there's this mom and this small ass like child that's like uh, maybe seven or eight years old. And they always get on the bus first because, come on, like, am I going to get on the bus first? I'm going to let the mom and the kid get on the bus first, right? But after they get on the bus, they walk so fucking slow because he's a tiny ass kid. And he just tumbles like every morning. I literally like tilt and rage. And I'm like, it's this goddamn fucking kid again. He's going to walk so fucking slow. And I have to wait just behind him to get to my fucking seat and it is the bane of my existence i have beef with this fucking nine or eight year old kid when i'm just i'm just fucking the head I'm, it's just me it's just it's just a me thing but he wants to give a better future for those kids and that's the idea right <laughs> Going back to the whole ambition thing, right? So he wants to make a city where it's always waku waku. Yeah, it's an adult's job, not your job, but he's, uh, you know, not just a kid. I think that's a noble reason. Yes, everybody's gonna be having fun and going waku waku. Yeah, what about the kids though? What are we gonna do about them? So I'll go with you, abandon the kids, so that those kids can have a better future. What is this? This is an appraisal item? Does it start glowing crazy if she has magic potential? Maybe it'll just break or some shit. It can't like handle her power. That's the fire spell that the other guys were using. Katun! <laughs> There's a power fantasy. All the world's kids, all the kids see it. It broke. It took two of those fucking idiots with two separate items to make a tiny ass flame, but this item couldn't even handle hers. Imagine what's gonna happen when she's trained, bro. Imagine if she has a better staff. Her entire demeanor changed right there. Actually smiling, has hope for the future. Monthly salary, we got an allowance, goddamn. Just ma make a little orphanage or something. We're rich as fuck, right? Mm -hmm. Started off with a pretty sad, you know, backstory. But then the ending of this is pretty happy, huh? There it is. Wagaruji. <laughs> Alright, ours. She is Onesan, but we need this time skip to happen so she can be, like, in her, like, 30s into a MILF, bro. So, yeah, and we bought you on top of that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, 
Three-year-old kid's gonna be recruiting more older people. But that nearby future, when the dad dies, like... It's already looking pretty bad, though, huh? <laughs> this is fuck. We're leaving the kids behind. <laughs> we're just gonna leave this poor kid. We're not leaving them behind. We're sending them money. And we're gonna, you know, offer them hospital. Uh, we're gonna like, give them food and shit. But it's like, you know, we're still like, bye. <laughs> we can't build an orphan to do something, bro. Someone's eaten. Charlotte's eaten. Oh, she eaten like a wild animal. She is like a wild animal, huh? Like a savage. <laughs> she is actually so wild. Not wild like crazy, but wild like a wild animal. We got a new mage girl. We got a short dad fireball right now, and the dad's gonna shut the fuck up. Fireball time. Yeah, here's another item. Yep, yeah, here we go. You think she can't fight? Here we go. Igni something, yep. Alright, come on in, girl. <laughs> the dad's... The dad's kind of funny. The dad... Like, like, he's such a serious person. But the comedic timing... Yep. Welcome. It's sad that the dad's gonna die in the future, though, huh? I want the dad to be around, too. And that's the episode. Another character has been obtained and it was kind of... This is probably the most real one so far, right? Like, Ritz had to face discrimination, racism. That was pretty bad too, yeah. That was pretty bad. I, I'm, I guess every character, we're gonna have to rescue them out of some shitty situation and, and hope for a better future. So her own thing was like, I couldn't even... I don't even remember the last time I cried. I can't even smile. I have no hope for the future and therefore she has no ambition. And then R sees that and he's like, why does she have no ambition? It's because she's been betrayed, right? She's a slave. She's she's been betrayed and now she's seeking out a better future for her, right? By having everyone go waku waku. And if, if everyone's going waku waku, then everything is happy and everyone's hopeful and, you know, can hope for a better future. And that's the kind of place that R wants to, you know, create in the future. So even if we're leaving behind the kids, we're not really. We're doing this and we're spending the money so that they can also have a better future. And her fire magic is fucking broken. Every time we have to use a magic skill, we have to get her a different fucking magic item because it immediately shatters. I'm sure we're going to get her some kind of staff. So it's going to be really good. She's also like a wild animal, which is kind of funny. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining in the future where it's going to be funny how this like... Maybe she'll look more refined in the future, but her mannerism will still be like a wild animal, which is going to be like a funny running gag. And the dad. The dad's comedic timing is so fucking good. It's just sad that the dad's gonna die soon because we already know that right opening and the preview actually shows another you know young kid so i think this is the final person that we're going to be recruiting in her immediate vicinity hold the fuck up why did she get so busty there wait 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 did something happen what what the fuck did happen why did she grow so much why why did her bus sizes Maybe there's a time small, small skip. What the fuck? Okay, maybe there's a time small time skip. But anyways, getting, getting focused on the plot. We have one more kid, I think, that we need to take into our party. And then we can do like a major time skip to a head to where the dad dies. I don't really know. But that's it for me. If you're still here, if you did enjoy this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.